Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, it's good to see each and every one of you. It's good to see several people back. It's good to have Miss Barb back with us. Good to have Pastor Willis back with us. And I'm happy to be back with you. And uh, I really missed you all last week. It's different being on live stream and uh, not being able to fellowship with you all. But I did enjoy stalking you all online and live last week. But uh, anyways, look around. I know we have some people who are out traveling, but it is the season for everybody to be sick. So I am thankful that people are getting sick, at least in shifts, that we're not all doing it at the same time, right? Is that even a thing to be thankful for? I don't know. <laughs> thankful, and let's be prayerful as well. So let's pray for those that are down this week. So good to see each and every one of you. Hope you had an opportunity to grab a bulletin. You can take a look at it. Make sure you mark all the important events and different things going on in the life of the church. Um, Ms. Shannon, our children's director, wanted me to point uh, your attention um, uh, to a certain thing that will be happening on March 1st, Sunday, March 1st, uh, we are going to have a spaghetti lunch, and that is going to be hosted by our children's department. It's going to be a fundraiser. It is, make sure I'm reading it right, $5 a ticket or 4 for 15 So that includes spaghetti, salad, dessert, and drinks. And uh, this is a fundraiser to help send our WIN kids to camp. And I understand you have quite a group of kids that are wanting to go to camp this summer, about 10 kids going to camps this summer. That's a lot of spaghetti we need to buy, right? So, um, see, Miss Shannon, are you going to be set up somewhere or just? All right. Just flag Miss Shannon down over here or one of the kids, and they'll make sure you get a ticket. But, again, that's $5 a ticket or 4 for 15 And also, down the hallway to your right, this way, left, right, depending on what way you're walking, but that children's wing, there's a bulletin board there. And you've got your fundraiser goal and all that stuff set up on the board. You can kind of look at that every week and uh, so on and so forth. But with that said, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come before you this morning. Father, so thankful and so grateful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. But Lord, most of all this morning, we are thankful for your son Jesus in our lives. And Father, we just want to celebrate you and your goodness through this service today. So Father, whatever is said, whatever is done through this time together, May we be careful to make sure you get all the praise and all the glory. Father, we love you and we praise you and we just ask all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people say together, amen. All right, a lot of our kids are missing today, but for what kids we have, hey, grab them cups and let's go shake everybody down for the loose change for missions. Stand and worship with us this morning.
Aren't you thankful this morning for what we have in him? We have so much hope. All right, if our ushers will come at this time, we'll continue our worship through givings. Let us pray together. Father, we just, once again, we want to come before you, Father, and just declare our great love for you. And Father, we come before you this morning with hearts of thanksgiving. Lord, hearts of thanksgiving that are filled with uh, thankfulness for what you do for each one of us. Lord, for how you meet our each and every individual need as um, individuals and collectively as a body. Father, we are truly a blessed people this morning. So, Father, as we worship through our giving this morning, it's my prayer that you will bless each gift, and, Father, that you will bless each giver, and that you bless and multiply these offerings today to further your kingdom in Winchester and beyond. We love you, and we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord was laid on him, the iniquity of us all. Stand with us as we worship again. In the life that you 
4 it says holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come you are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being I will adore 
be seated. Amen. Well, we're going to go into one of my favorite times of our worship services, and that's that time where we just simply just get still before the Lord. And here in a moment, the praise team is going to sing to lead us into our time of prayer together. They're going to sing, <clears throat> they're going to sing that song, As the Deer. And uh, let that be the prayer of your heart this morning. Thirst and hunger for more of God. And just know that he'll lead you through at any given time because that's just the God that we serve. Can I get an amen? amen? And before they go into that time and before I lead us in general prayer following that time, um, I just feel pressed this morning. Maybe you have an unspoken request. I'd like to just mentally picture you this, this morning as I go into prayer time. If you've got an unspoken request, would you just slip your hand in the air? I like to specifically just remember you in my mind. All right. Got y'all. Thank you. God is so good. So as this time, they're going to sing a song. Just know these altars are open. And if you just want to come to the Lord and have a good chat with him this morning, he just wants to meet you right where you're at in your time of need or whatever you have. And he would just like to overwhelm you with his presence. So anytime during this song, come forward with these altars and give a, give a good talk to God. Father, as we come before you this morning, Lord, I, I find such peace in realizing the words to that song that say that you are our strength and you are our shield. Father, your word promises us that you are just that. You are the strength. You are the shield. You are the comforter. You're our shelter. You're our strong tower. You're our place of peace. And this morning, as we come before you, Lord, Father, it's just amazing that you are just as close as the mention of your name. Father, each one of us can attest this morning, I'm sure, that your grace is truly amazing. When we reflect upon our own lives, 
when we think about what you've saved us from, what you've delivered us from, how you've delivered us from sin and shame. You gave us the most precious gift through your son, Jesus. So, Father, this morning we give you thanks and we give you praise for the most precious gift of all, the gift of your son. Father, we just want to start this time together just by simply saying that we love you today. And, Father, we just want to praise your most precious and holy name and give you thanks. And we want to recognize this morning that we truly are a blessed people this morning. It's amazing if we just stop in this crazy, fast-paced world, just step back for just a a millisecond and look around. We can see your mighty hand at work. It's amazing sometimes just to sit back and watch you do your thing. Father, you truly are the amazing God. Father, this morning there there are some in this place. We saw a show of hands, unspoken request. Father, you know each and every hand that was raised, and you know uh, the prayer need that represents there. And Father, I just ask that you would intercede this morning on each one's behalf. Father, just truly thankful for answer prayer. Father, we see some of our own brothers and sisters that are able to be back with us today after a long spell down. Father, we are thankful for restored health. We are thankful for healing. But we're also mindful this morning of many of our brothers and sisters that could not be with us this morning due to sickness and illness. Tis the season for sickness. And Father, we pray for strength and we pray for healing for each one of those. Father, maybe somebody can stand this morning and give even a praise that they've not been affected by the cold and flu season. Father, continue to keep them strong. Surround each one of us with your grace and your presence. Father, this morning, uh, my mind goes to... uh, Our sister Jamie, who had uh, a pretty big surgery the other day, I spoke with her this morning, and she's still in a lot of pain. But Father, we ask right now that you would just uh, bring restored health and healing to her body. May the days of her recovery be quick and pain-free. Father, would you just reach out and touch Jamie right now and be with her and Dave and her, her folks as they tend to her side and are being the family that they're called to be. Father, we lift them up to you right now. We think of our brother Lloyd, who hurt his knee at work and had to have surgery this past Friday. Spoke with him as well this morning, and uh, he's still in a lot of pain. Just pray for your touch and your hand to be upon him. We pray for his days of recovery ahead, that health and healing will be quick and pain-free. Father, it's good to see Brother Willis back with us this morning, and Barb, and Father, for how you've touched their bodies as well. Father, I just uh, come before you this morning. I... I think of the condition of our world as we were kind of talking in bits and pieces in Sunday school this morning. My heart is so heavy for our country alone. The moral compass is broken. Father, how we just want to, we want to see revival in our land. So Father, we, we give you our country right now. We pray for our elected leaders and officials. Father, we pray that they will seek your guidance and your direction in each and every decision that they, that they make. Father, may we see a testimony, even on national news, of a revival that spread in our country. Now, Father, during this time that uh, we're about to look into your word, Father, I just pray that you would still our hearts and still our minds. Father, help us to be open to your word and to its leading. May we be open to what you have for each one of us today. And Father, I think of the song we just sang leading into this time. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. May each and every one of our souls here today long after you, not just on Sundays, but in every day that ends in Y. May we hunger and thirst for you and your righteousness. Father, help us each one to be the people that you are calling us to be. Father, we just want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise this morning. Father, we just ask all these things in the precious name of your son Jesus and all God's people say together amen amen kids you may be dismissed for junior church at this time who wants that energy (laughs) some of you may not have heard Miss Kathy down here she said me I got to go be with them
Lord, give her energy more than they have. How about that, Kathy? <laughs> All right, if you will, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, while you're turning there, I just want to say thank you for your prayers. I know many of you reached out to me this past week and uh, shared that you were praying with me and are praying for me and all that. I truly appreciate that because uh, God's healing hand of mercy has been upon my own body, um, some of that supernaturally by his strength and power, but also by the means of modern medicine. Um, I'm still digesting some uh, pretty good pills right now to uh, clear up my chest, so if I fall asleep during my sermon, please forgive me. <laughs> wake me like I would wake you, right? But I do want to thank you for your prayers. I truly missed being here. Uh, pastors have this thing, when they don't get to be behind their pulpit, there's something lacking for the rest of the week. It's just like when you go on vacation, maybe you go to church somewhere or you have a time of study uh, on a Sunday morning when you are away. It's just something about not being with your church family. The rest of the week, you just feel off. And it's funny, I only missed one Sunday, but it feels like it's been 100 years since I've seen all of you. I mean, like Fred, he looks 100 years older, but other than that, I just want to see if you were listening, Fred. You know I love you, right? <laughs> Fred said it takes a lot of work to look that good. But uh, we're going to can kind of continue on in Paul's prison letter uh, in Ephesians this morning. And uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've been able to share. So I have a lot more to say. You know, when a pastor gets a week off, it feels like they got to double up when they come back. Can I get an amen? amen. Or a Lord help us. <laughs> there was more Lord help us than more amens. That's pretty pathetic. Let's reopen the altars. But uh, I, I don't know how long I will be, because I will say, the more I talk, the more winded I get, because my chest is still a little bit tight, so I'll, I'll still try to give you 60 minutes. We're on the Lord's time. Can I get an amen? All right. Well, we're going to talk, continue talking about this life, this life that is uh, living up to uh, worthy of the calling. Each one of us have a call upon our life, and for the first week uh, of January, if you can go way back, I talked to you all about uh, our relationship in the church. And then that second week, we took a look at our relationship in this world. And today, we're going to even narrow it down just a little bit more, your relationship period with the Lord. How about that? Your relationship with the Lord. What does that look like? What does that calling look like? Well, it looks like the other callings a little bit, that calling in the church, that calling in the world. We all have a calling upon our lives. So today we're going to narrow it down to an individual calling, a life that we are supposed to walk in. So today we're going to look at walking in love. And um, that is a part of our walk. That is part one, walk in love. Say it with me, walk in love. Love. Used to, used to go to church with a gentleman. Uh, we were sitting in men's Bible study once, and uh, he used to have this reference. Uh, we were talking about holiness living. We were talking about joy of our salvation in a men's Bible study once, and kind of comparing and contrasting between the two, paralleling and doing all these different looks at what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. And he said, sadly, we see in the church way too often today, we see those who are saved. Amen. We see those who are sanctified. Amen. And what a shame we see those who are soured. He said, so we have saved, sanctified, and soured. Some people are all in one. Can I get an amen? You all, don't look at your neighbor. Quit looking at your neighbor. Don't be saved, sanctified, and soured. But Ephesians chapter 5, Paul continues on, and he, he admonishes and he gives us, gives us this thought of being something, looking like something. So he starts out in Ephesians chapter 5, first one, be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Verse 3, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Verse 4, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For out of this can be, you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man as an, is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, but because of such things, God's, because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. 
Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and of truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Does that sound like today? Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So verses 1 through 6, we're going to take a, a little bit closer look at what it looks like to walk in love. So Paul starts out this, this portion of the letter with these words, be imitators of God. What does that look like? What does it look like to imitate? You ever annoy your friends or your parents when you start to mimic and repeat everything that they say? I used to love doing that to my sister. Man, that drove her absolutely nuts. Repeat every word that she said. You guys ever do that to your siblings? Wasn't that fun? Go home and try it with your spouse. They'll love it. Be imitators. Mimic. Mimic a lifestyle of love. Be imitators of God. What is God? God is what? God is love. Pure and simple. Plain and simple. Just that he is the epitome of love. He is the very being of love. He is the very presence of love. He is the very essence of love. He is the poster child for love. Amen? God is love. So Paul is reminding us that if you want to walk a life that is worthy of the calling, if you want to walk the walk, you must walk in love, which means... You are the reflection of God in the way that you love those around you. Man, I should just stop right now. Well, that was a good sermon. I'm already winded, but hey. Whew. Be imitators, he's telling us. Mimic God. Imitate God. Be love. Mimic love. Back in high school, I used to love being in the high school musicals. Anybody ever in high school musicals? Love that. That was a bunch of fun. My freshman year, I was in the musical Grease. My senior year, I was in the musical Little Abner. Now, my sophomore and junior year, I didn't like the musicals they picked, so I chose just to be stage crew because I thought they were stupid musicals that they picked. That's just the way I rolled. But I helped out. I did lights and curtains and all that other stuff. But I remember my, my freshman year, I got, to, I got picked as a part in uh, the musical Grease. And I thought it was cool because as a freshman... I got a part. It wasn't a main part. I was an extra dancer, you know, the, uh, for the high school version of Greece. They, they were called Burger Boys. And uh, so I got to be a part of the, the guys' dance scenes and stuff, you know, Grease Lightning, go Grease Lightning. I, I mean, I remember it all. It was, it was all there. And uh, yeah, I can still move. I was in show choir, too. I can do a jazz square. I mean, it's all good. But I remember being a part of that, and I was so proud of that, but my speaking part that I got to be, if you remember the musical Grease, how many of you remember the musical Grease? I was Vince Fontaine. Anybody remember Vince Fontaine? He was that sleazy older guy who, you know, walked around the dance floor, and I watched Grease over and over and over and over so that I could become an imitator of Ed Burns, who played the part of Vince Fontaine on the movie Grease, which... God rest his soul, he passed away three weeks ago. I just saw that on the news because my sister sent me his obituary and said, hey, you just passed away. That was her sense of humor. Anyways, but I, I watched that over and over because I wanted to get Ed Burns, how he did it just in the movie Grease. I wanted to get his strut down and I wanted to get his look down. I had to do the, the cool hair. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to be the real Vince Fontaine. I wanted Ed Burns to say, man, I wish I was as good as he was. 
And boy, when that musical rolled around, I put that suit on, I had it down. I, I imitated. I imitated. I mimicked everything that he did. Now, my senior year, when I got my next speaking part, which was quite a bit bigger and a lot more to memorize, I got to be in the musical Little Abner. And anybody remember Little, Little Abner? Who was available? Jones. That was my part. He was the nerd. I was just myself. I was just myself. Didn't have to. Didn't have to imitate or mimic. I just acted like a nerd like I already was. But anyways, when, when you, you're, you're given these parts, you've got to study the lines. And, and in those parts and in those scripts, it tells you exactly how you're to look, whether to smile or frown, seem agitated, raise your voice, lower your voice, yell it. It gave you those instructions. So as you're going through those, you're trying to remember as you're practicing and memorizing, okay, I'm supposed to say this angrily. So then you practice, I did it in front of a mirror, I practice looking angry, which is hard for me to do because I'm a happy guy. And I would work on the voice, I would work on my angry look, or I'd look at my happy look, or whatever the part called for, I wanted to look like. This is kind of what Paul is reminding us to be. If God is love and we are to be people of God, that means we are to be a reflection of God, which means we're to walk in love, right? So he's telling you, be like your pastor and mimic the character that you're supposed to be. He's saying, be an imitator of God. And if we know what God is all about, shouldn't we be all about God? Amen. I remember one of the greatest compliments I ever received in my life was my senior year of high school. You know, uh, when you're getting ready to graduate, we, you give those different awards for different things or the class votes on certain things, best looking. I didn't win that. Still crying foul on that. No, really, guys. I was really, really skinny with a big, big head. Really wasn't that good looking in school. You know, I told you what I looked like as a baby. My dad said I was like toothpicks on a bowling ball. I mean, I had a big head. It took 18 years to grow into this head, okay? But they vote all of these different things. And when we had our senior breakfast, they gave out all the awards, you know, best looking guy, best looking girl, smartest guy, smartest girl, best couple, blah, 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 all those different things. But when they got to this one, they said, friendliest in the class. And they said, uh, the girl, it was Lisa. And then they called my name for the friendliest guy in the class. And I'm like, that is a really good designation. And the reason I was blessed by that, because not only did my classmates recognize me as the friendliest guy in their class, but long before my senior year, growing up, I watched my dad. I heard so many people say through the years, Ray Kessel is such a nice man. He, doesn't, he never meets a stranger. That's my dad. That can also be a bad thing sometimes when you're wanting to get out of a store or get out of a mall or get out of a restaurant when your dad stops and talks to like 20 different people on the way out. And, you know, as a kid, you know, mom and dad bundle you up and you're like super burning up after 20, 30 minutes of extra conversation. Parents, why, why do we do this to our kids? And sometimes I remember my mom, you know, be like, geez, is there anybody he does not know? I mean, we would leave town, go to Columbus, Ohio, or somewhere far away from home, and dad would always run into people. But I remember as a child hearing people say, Ray Kessel is such a friendly man. And I remembered that at an early age. And I thought... I want that. I want to be, I want people to say that about me. I want to be like my dad. I want to be a, I want to be the friendly guy. And when I got that award my senior year, I thought, I'm like dad. My dad was the friendliest guy I knew. So I thought, man, I've arrived. I'm like dad. And that was a big thing for me. Paul is telling us that. Be like God. Wouldn't you love it? You get into judgment, just you and the Lord. He says, hey, take a seat. Scoots sits down in his chair, scoots up right, looks at you eye to eye, and he says, thank you for imitating me. Thank you for being a reflection of me. Thank you for adhering to that call in your life to walk a life of love. So Paul is literally saying in these verses, be imitators, mimics, as God's children. We need to imitate the Father. God is love, and we should therefore walk in love. The other greatest part of this picture, what is the greatest gift we've ever received in our life? 
Well, verse 2. Live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering. And let me just add in that a gift and sacrifice to God. Man, if this just doesn't sum up the love that God has for each one of us, if this does not sum up the definition of God being love, I don't know what does. Because here's this picture. God is love. We've already covered that, right? Love is God. What is Jesus? He's God and man. So if he's God and man, he's God and man overwhelmed by love in his very being. Am I right? And he loved himself so much that he gave himself up, Paul says, as a fragrant offering. And as Pastor Dave says, a gift. What a gift. Amen? This is an offering for you and for me. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. And here's the picture that is even greater than any of that. Jesus did all of that, not only for the love for each one of us, but the love for his Father. He was obedient to the Father. He was obedient so much, it was obedience to the cross for us. Aren't we a blessed people this morning? Obedience to... Jesus did not have to hang on a cross. People say, well, the nails kept him there. No. Love kept him there. Love kept him there. All Jesus had to do was say, no, I don't think so. This is too much. Come save me. And don't you know, if he would have said that, what would have happened? He'd have been saved. And it had been a sweeping wind of God's mightiest army coming to save the precious Son of God. Jesus didn't do that. He said, I love them so much, I'm staying Praise be to God this morning. So we are to be a reflection of God's love in this world. And if we remember this, this, this offering that Christ gave us with his life, shouldn't we walk with a heart full of joy? I know life's going to be hard. I know life's going to be difficult. But shouldn't this give us a little bit of peace? Because we are more than victors, amen? Through Christ who saved us. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 7 through 14. Let's look at that real quick. Oh, you know what? I skipped a section. We cannot skip. Let's go back, uh, verse 3b. Paul is saying here, we'll just start in verse 3. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for it's because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. So Christ stepped in, absorbed God's wrath for us. This is big. He absorbed all of that for us. But Paul reminds us if we are to walk in love or we are to be the people that God is calling us to be, there will be what? There will be no, there will be no hint of a sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of of greed because there are these are improper for God's people. So he gives us a couple designations or definitions of what this looks like, but he says because these are improper for God's holy people. So what is improper? Well, Paul gives us a look at a few things right there that are improper, but I'm believing this morning what Paul is saying, if it's any if it's outside of the will of God for your life, that's improper. If we know that we should not be doing something, but we do it anyways, that's improper. That's outside of God's will. That's what improper looks like. We are called to be, as Paul says, a holy people. He says it. It's improper for God's holy people. He doesn't say it's improper for God's people. He inserts this word, it's improper for God's holy people. Because as God's holy people, we are called to a higher calling. To live a life of love and of holiness. Amen? 
no sexual immorality, any kind of impurity, any greed. There's to be no obscenity, no foolish talk, no coarse joking. These are out of place. For that you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person. If you are living a life outside of God's will, knowing for God's will for you is to be a holy person, be it you put that improper lifestyle in front of that, Paul is saying that makes you an idolater because you made that before God. Because you have a calling to be holy. You have a calling to be pure. And if you're not living up to that, you've put it before God. Am I right in saying that? So it's not only improper, but it makes you an idolater because you put it before God's call on your life. God help us. Amen? Paul's fired up here as he's, as he's house arrest, man. Now I'll move on for you. How about this? Ephesians chapter 5, 7 through 14. We're also called to not only walk in love, but to walk in the light. I'm thankful that once I walked in darkness, but light pierced the darkness, and now I live free. Now I leave, live whole. Now I have grace. Now I have peace. Now I have a hope, and I no longer am stuck in the darkness. I'm thankful that I'm no longer bound to the darkness of my past. And because of the light of Christ, I have a bright hope and a bright future. Woo! I'm not kicking my leg this morning because I do not want to lose that. I did not break this a few weeks ago, by the way, when it fell hard out of my pocket. But I'm trying not to learn not to kick my leg until I get something a little bit tighter around the belt here to keep this thing from flying. But let's look at verses 7 through 14. Therefore, so he, so he transitions, he continues on. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Do not be partners with what? Well, what we've just talked about for the past 10 minutes. Do not make a partnership with anything that's improper. For you were once darkness, and now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So, basically what he's saying here, okay, catch the wording, because I love the all-inclusive language. All goodness, all righteousness, and of all truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why he said, it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Wow. Walk in the light. He says here, do not partner. Do not make a partnership with all of the above. Therefore, do not be partners with. Well, what should we partner with then? Well, we should partner with God is what Paul is saying. Be imitators. Be mimics. Make a partnership. Make a pact. And be a part of the things of God. So by walking in the light, we become partners. We become partakers. This is what partners is translated as, by the way. Partakers. We are partakers in the light. This implies that we have something in common with God. That something in common is the light of God. Amen? We have a fellowship. We have a partnership. We are part of God's group. We're part of God's club. Let's just be so holy that we're fighting over who's the president of God's fan club. Not really fighting over it because we don't do that in the church today, do we? Everybody gets along. Everybody's happy, right? A little sarcasm there? Anyway. Walk in the light. So Christians are partakers and partners in this. And you can mark this in your notes. I'm running through these really fast because I got six of them that I want to share with you. I could have made the list a top ten, but I just felt like six was long enough because I figured I'd be long-winded anyways. Uh, we are partners as followers in Christ of the divine nature. Second Peter 1.4 Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. And don't you love the promises of God? So that through them, you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Man, our world's in chaos, ladies and gentlemen. 
Our world is in literal chaos. Our country is in literal chaos. There's no sense of direction at all because the moral compass is broken. For those of you that were in Sunday school this morning, you got a preview of that comment. We have no direction in this world because the moral compass is broken. How to get broken? We allowed it to be broken. So one, we shouldn't be partners with it. But we are living in this world as followers of Christ, and it is all around us. I don't like watching it. I don't like seeing it. I don't like hearing it. But I'm doing this right here with my hand because you know what this is? This is just what it looks like because God's protection is all around me as a follower of him. Man, we fret and we worry and we bicker and we fight and we fuss about who's in office and who's saying what and who's doing what. Let's just be real. There's a lot of stinking thinking going on in our government. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. It's just flat out crazy all around. Amen? Amen. You know what I find hope and peace in? God. You know why? He's not in the White House, but he's on the throne. He's not in Congress, but he's on the throne. He's not in the Senate, but he's on the throne. He's not head of our local municipalities, but he's on the throne. So if he's on the throne, he's over all of those. So here, everybody go with me. Come on, get your hands up. Doesn't it feel good to have God all around you? Some of you need more sleep because you can't even let God get all around you. Some of you ain't stopping. Some of you are enjoying it. And if you're close to Philip, he's got those big long arms. The whole back row is covered. Both sides, both sides. As followers of Christ, we are also partakers and partners in the the promises of God. I love the promises of God. My favorite, and there's so many, my favorite covers them all. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, the mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I don't care what side of the political fence you're on, but on the the side of Christ, as a follower of Christ, I am thankful for a president who decided to make a partnership with Israel. Did he just say that out loud? (laughs) Democrat, Republican, Christianity first, right? I'm thankful for a president who partnered with Israel. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, I'll say it again, or I'm sorry, Yeah, I was right. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promises in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. As partners and partakers with Christ and followers of Christ, we are partners with Christ's sufferings. 1 Peter 4.13. But rejoice, rejoice, he says. And as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when the glory is revealed. As a follower of Christ, let's just be real. There's going to be sufferings. People are going to look down on you. People are going to talk nasty about you. People aren't going to like you. Well, guess what? That's what Jesus received when he was here ministering in this world. We partner with Christ in this. I look up to my Jesus. I've heard people say Jesus is weak. They don't know him. It takes a pretty tough man to allow himself to go to a cross. Amen? I believe Jesus was the original man's man. Amen? We are partners in the sufferings of Christ. We are partners in holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10, they disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. I'm thankful first for the holiness of my God, but I'm also thankful that as a Nazarene and a denomination whose main battle cry is holiness unto the Lord, I am thankful for our denomination because our battle cry is holiness unto the Lord. That is, we adhere to the life that we are called to live. 
walking in love, walking in light. Folks, that equates to holiness. Holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and song. I'll never forget 2012 when I got ordained in the Church of the Nazarene. And uh, we're, there, we're, we're processing in, and uh, the, the song being sung by the minister's choir and the congregation that was there that night, um, Holiness Unto the Lord. And here come all of us ordinands with our spouses walking. It just feels like I felt like I was marching in a mighty army. Because of that song that was being sung so loud and so proud. Holiness unto the Lord is our watchword. Can we sing that next week? Just put you on the spot right there. Everybody's waiting. Next week we're going to sing holiness unto the Lord. She's making a note right now. I just want to go back in time to a sweet, sweet memory. Holiness unto the Lord. As partners with God, we are also partakers in the heavenly calling. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus. And Paul, we shared about this beginning of Ephesians. Fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge as our apostle and our high priest. And may I say our example. Christ is our example. Let me remind you the beginning of our text today. Be imitators. Imitators, say it with me, imitators. We also share as followers of Christ. We partake in God's glory. This one's big. Y'all, I think we can all agree God's mighty strong. I think we can all agree God is mighty, mighty. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder... <clears throat> And a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. I don't know what this day of glory is going to look like. But I'll tell you one thing. If I'm here to see it, whew, what a sight that will be. I think I may have done this before. But can you imagine being caught up in the air with Christ? Whew, what a journey. What a ride. I mean... I watch Superman, guys, and I think flying's cool. And if I'm still alive when Jesus says, woo, and I go to meet him in the air, can you imagine? I don't know if I'll be doing that. It's just what I have in my head. Thank you for joining me in my brain for a moment. Let's hurry up and leave my brain. All I know is it's going to be an amazing day. But if I don't see it, it's okay. You know why? Because if I go on before that day, I'm already going to be with him. It ain't going to matter. What will be cool, though, if I'm already with him, I'll be peeling my cloud, my cloud apart going, oh, ho, ho, there they come. Ow! I don't care which side of the cloud you're on. It's going to be a fun ride and a fun day. Amen? I don't know why I think these things. I said those six things to remind us that what we have is something amazing. We have an amazing partnership with God Almighty. We have an amazing partnership with not a holy God, but the holy God. Wow. So in knowing that we have this partnership, how could we or why would we ever want to be partners with the darkness ever again? One of the greatest tragedies are people who come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they walk with Him and they talk with Him and they serve Him and they, they partner with Him and they have this partnership. They are partakers in the kingdom. They are partakers of that glory. They are partakers of that, that, that power, that glory, that, that whole kingdom thing. And they experience God like they never have before, only to turn and walk away from it. That's, to me, a definition of tragedy. Amen? To have known the power of God and to choose another direction. That is tragic. What well, happens for this reason, and Paul reminds us of this. Lost my place. There's this, verse 8. For once, you were, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. 
then jumping down, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Here's what happens. People come to know the Lord. People come to experience that power. And they feel it. They see it. They praise about it. Only to go another direction because darkness came alongside them and lied to them. What darkness produces sin. Darkness produces lies. Here's the cool thing about our God. The fruit of the light exposes it. The fruit of the light breaks that darkness. Light comes onto the scene and darkness can't even fight it. In fact, the light of Christ comes into the scene of our life and darkness goes, ah! Oh! Runs a lot faster now, but I did not want to trip in front of you. Darkness will literally run away from the light. But darkness will work very hard at lying to you. Amen? But light will expose it, and light will free you. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. Be very careful, Paul moves on to. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He literally does, he does not say, be careful. He doesn't say, watch out. What he says is, be very careful. You catch that? He says, be very careful. That, that is one little tiny word added in there, but it means a whole lot more than just be careful. Because when you think of just be careful, you're thinking maybe a haphazardly kind of careful. Well, I'll look around a little more than I normally do. But no, Paul says, be very careful, right? Look at everything around you. Be very careful in how you live. Not as what? Not as unwise, but as wise. And I underline this, verse 16, making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. He transitions to verse 17. And because of all of those that you just heard in the past two verses, he says, therefore, do not be foolish. Because if you are not very careful in your walk with Christ, guess what? You're being foolish. Can I get an amen? If you are not careful in your walk with Christ, you're being foolish. That's why he says, be very careful. Therefore, do not be foolish. But understand what the Lord's will is. I underlined it and circled it here in my Bible. I wish you could see it. A lot of blue ink on this page. Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So, how are we very careful? Well, we, we are very careful by looking, but understanding what the Lord's will is. What is the Lord's will for our lives? Jump down another sentence or two, and it is to be filled with the Spirit. This is how you become a very careful Christian. You allow yourself to be open to the presence of the Holy Spirit from head to toe in your very being, and therefore, if you're doing that, guess what? You're not foolish. You're not unwise, but you're wise. And let me tell you, if you're allowing yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're wise and you're strong and you're watchful. You're also, you get the benefits, you're protected, you're strengthened, you're encouraged. Darkness is going to come alongside you. But if you're being very careful in the Spirit, guess what? Darkness can't lie to you. You can say, darkness, get out of here, you're a fool. Because you're not in the Lord's will, I am. And here's the power that we live in. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times as a pastor. If you just utter the name of Jesus, 
darkness has to leave. Goodbye. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, darkness. Get on out of my life. Did he just say that out loud? Yes. Looking around carefully, Paul is reminding us, as not to stumble, as not to fall. It means walking intelligently. That's why he's using the word wise and unwise. If you are wise in knowing what the Lord's will is and allowing yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit, guess what? Your IQ goes up because you're, you're living smarter. Amen? How foolish to stumble along life and never seek the will of God. There are so many people sitting in churches right now some are already out because they're not as long-winded as me. You can laugh. I'm making fun of myself. Thank you, Tammy, for joining me in my laughter. People are sitting in churches all around the United States. Now, let's just say that people are in churches all around the world on this very day. And just because they're sitting within the walls and under the roof of the church, it does not make them a follower of Christ. It does not make them a Christian. It may make them, maybe or they maybe they're a believer, but your actions got to match your belief, right? Many people sitting in churches today, and they're living as unwise. Many people sitting in churches today, and they don't want to know the, Lord, the Lord's will in their life, because they know enough about the Lord that if they seek the Lord's will, guess what? They're about to become very uncomfortable. God does not call us into comfort. That's another sermon. Come back, we'll take up an offering, we'll have another sermon. As we obey the will of God, we buy up opportunities in this life. We buy up opportunities in this world. Remember, guys, we're partners of the kingdom. We are partnering with God. Doesn't that just sound cool as it rolls off my tongue? Partners with God. Man, there's a lot of powerful people in this world, a lot of rich people, a lot of influential people in this world. And we could partner with them. But I'd rather be partners with God. That just sounds cool. Man. Here's the problem. A lot of, play, a lot of people can play a good game. A lot of people can fake the walk. Wow, he's about to close and he's leaving us with this. A lot of people fake the walk. I've met many people who fake the walk. I was one of them for a long time. I knew how to talk. I knew how to appear and carry myself on Sunday morning so that I looked like Bob the happy Christian, Joe the happy Christian. Because we all know that person, we want to, that's an imitating thing, right? So we go back to the beginning. Know what to say, know what to do on the outside, but not having it on the inside. This is why Paul is telling us, be imitators of God. Because here's the problem. A lot of times, and a lot of you will probably, if not all of you, will agree with me on this. Sometimes it's hard to hear a person's witness because their actions drown out who they claim to be. Let me say that again. Sometimes you cannot hear a person's witness because their actions drown out who they claim to be. I don't know who quoted that, but I sure wanted to steal it this morning. So if you're out there and you're the one who copyrighted it, listening in Cyberland, that's a good one. Oftentimes, you cannot hear a person's witness because of the actions, their actions drown out who they claim to be. Is that you this morning? Wow. My prayer is that you are living as an imitator of God. So let me encourage you. If you are not, let me ask the question, why not? Because after hearing this, shouldn't you want more of God? This wasn't me. This was just from the Word. Be imitators 
of God because we are partners in the heavenly kingdom. So if, if you are living as a wise person, you will be seeking the Lord's will. Let's see if you listen for these past 40 minutes. What is the Lord's will? To be filled with the Spirit. I know you guys wanted to say it. I know it was on the tip of your tongue, but you were afraid of being wrong. If you are wise, you are seeking the Lord's will. The Lord's will is to be filled with the Spirit. So let me encourage you as you walk from this place today. Walk here not seeking what lunch will be, although lunch will be really good, I'm sure. But walk out of this place as a wiser person who is seeking the Lord's will. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and beyond for the rest of your life on this earth, be wise seeking the Lord's will by allowing yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, life will be so much easier. Life will be so much greater. You will be what? You will be shielded. You will be protected. And when you live that life, when you are an imitator of God, it was brought up in Sunday school this morning, people will take note. Your life can become the best sermon, not even spoken. Amen? Be the example of a good example of what a Christian should be. All right? So this week, what are you going to do? You're going to be a what? An imitator of God. Let us pray together. Oh God, we are so thankful for your word. Father, we are so thankful not only for your word, but for the power that is behind it. And what is that power? We as believers, we know that power is based and sourced through the Holy Spirit. So Lord, as we go from this place in all the days of our life, may we be imitators of you, seeking to know what your will is. And allowing ourselves to be open to that will, which is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, as you have this calling a place upon our life, Lord, help us to walk the walk. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we just ask all these things in Christ's name. And all God's children say together, amen. God bless you. Thank you for sharing your Sunday with us. Take a moment to greet those around you.